All right, first and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. This is Aksham Gar. As you can see, the lesson is titled, <clears throat> The Lord Will Provide Divine Intervention for His Elect. All right? So the Spirit has me going into this topic because the Akim and Akwatim, right, they need to be fed with this uh, particular information, right? Because me, myself, personally, um, you know, I was under this uh, carnal way of thinking in the past right you know earlier in my you know in my uh, earlier years of the truth that by my own strength i was going to prevail right by my own strength i needed you know a bunch of different guns i needed to stack a whole garage full of food and you know what i mean make sure you know i'm like one of those doom doomsday prepper type guys right <clears throat> now you'll, you'll have a lot of different guys like that you know like that out there in uh in Israel, right? And that's just not the case because let me go ahead and read this for you. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 9, it says, He will keep the feet of his saints. So who is he? That's Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, right? So it says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be in silent darkness. So the wicked, they're the ones who have the trouble, right? They're the ones that have to fear, right? Not not the uh not the most high's elect. Right? It says he will keep the feet of his saints. So meaning that he's going to protect his very elect, man. Lord willing, Yahweh Radazah, I be a part of the elect. And as well as you listening, right? So it says, <clears throat> for by strength shall no man prevail. So that's the point. So by your own strength, you're not going to prevail. You need Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? We need him to protect us and provide divine intervention in order for us to, uh, you know, make it through what's coming. Because, you know, what we're seeing out here in the media, we see Esau's, you know, he, he's pushing these mandates heavy, man. And he's just starting now. He's just starting, right? So it's going to get worse. You see what's going on going on in um Australia over there? They 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 busting down doors, they rioting, they're going crazy. That's coming to the shores of America. You see constant police officers, navy SEALs, people in the uh people uh in the military leaving and dropping their jobs. Why? Because they're not agreeing on what's going on here in Babylon, right? When it comes to those different mandates and they feel like their their freedoms uh and their rights are being uh, infringed upon, right? <clears throat> so let me go ahead and read this for you because Esau. He's going to come like a, uh, 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 like a flood, man. He's going to be busting down doors to try to make people take that MOB, right? That Mark of the Beast and that, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, that jab, that arm juice, right? Which, you know, if you're a, a servant of the Heavenly Father, you're supposed to say no to those things, right? And in order for us to make it through what's coming, right, we're going to need Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because if Esau somehow gets that stuff inside of you, right, that's because the Most High didn't want you, man. Right, he's going. To, he's going to provide a way for his elect to make it through without without receiving any of that, man. So Isaiah chapter fifty nine and verse nineteen and it says, "So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood." That's Esau. Esau is going to come in like a flood. Right. It says the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Right. So the Lord, he's going to lift up a standard against Esau. Let's go into that word for standard. Right. So that way you can understand what's going on. Uh, Nuwak, right? Noose. So it says to flee, to escape, right? So the Lord is going to allow us to flee and to escape, right? Because contrary to belief, Esau doesn't control a damn thing. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1 says the king's heart is in the hand of the most high, right? Let me get that for you. <clears throat> the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and 1, it says the king's heart is in the hand of Yahweh as the rivers of water he turneth it with whatsoever he will. So <clears throat> the, the, the heavenly father, he controls the minds of these uh, uh, leaders and everybody on the face of the earth, man. Oh, I got free will. So it's already predestined who's going to make it through and who's, who's not, man. So the Lord is going to provide a way for us to flee, to escape, to take flight, to depart, to disappear. So he might just teleport us. You see what I'm saying? He might give us the ability to fly away, right? We see how uh, uh, <clears throat> in the book of Bell and the Dragon, right? Yahweh literally had an angel grab uh, uh, um, Habakkuk and take him to where uh, Daniel was so that way he can feed Daniel with food when he was in the lion's den, right? It says to take flight, to put to flight. So he might give us the spiritual power to what? To put our enemies to, uh, to flight, man. Didn't that happen in the book of, uh, uh, the book of Maccabees, right? Where he allowed uh, Judas Maccabees with, 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 with just a few men to put to flight thousands, right? Are we not the? Are we not that same elect, man? Right? 
Now, now understand this, right? The elect has to be here, right? So the elect is here. It is prophesied that the elect are here right now at this point in time. So in order for the elect to make it through, you see these different types of movies. For any, for you to be able to get away from Esau's FBI grip and his military, you got to have some type of, you know, special powers or, or, or divine intervention because eventually the person, the bad guy get caught, right? So the point is, it says, you know, we're going to be have, uh, we're going to have the ability to put them to flight, right? He's going to cause us to uh, disappear, right? He's going to be able to hide us, right? We're going to be able to, uh, you know, uh, somehow get away, right? And he's going to tuck us away and hide us. So that way, you know, Esau, he won't even be able to find us, man. He won't be, uh, he won't even be able to touch us, right? And then we have that spiritual power. We can put his ass to flight. So this is what's coming to the men of the Heavenly Father, right? The men that believe, the men that are sincerely doing the work of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, right? This is why it's so important, right, to put your, put your brick in now, man. Do what the Heavenly Father requires of you, man, because we need the elect to be sealed so that way we can get the hell up out of here, man. So that way Esau can come down. As soon as the elect is sealed, this place is finished. All right, so the Heavenly Father, he's going to provide divine intervention for his elect. This is what the scriptures say. So if the scriptures say it, then, you know, this is this is, this is is what's going to happen. No word comes back to the Heavenly Father void. And we can also see through history what the Heavenly Father has, uh, you know, always provided divine intervention for what? His, 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 you know, his men. So let me get that for you, right? <clears throat> Where am I at? Matter of fact, let me go over here. The book of uh second kings right and i'm gonna get one and i'm gonna start at verse nine so this is the book of you know this is the book of kings but this is talking about elijah right so elijah who we know is a man of the lord right <clears throat> there was a spe uh, specific king who was trying to get an audience with uh elijah to get him to come to him right elijah was chilling on top of a mountaintop or, or a hill and he sent like a, a a captain with an army of 50 behind him right to, to try to capture elijah so that way elijah can come back you know, and, but Elijah wasn't having it, right? And the Lord was with uh, uh, the Lord was with Elijah. So let's go ahead and read that. So it says Second Kings chapter one verse nine. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty, right? And he went up to him and beheld. So like and behold, he sat on top of the hill, and he spake unto him, "Thou man of God." So Elijah was a man of the Most High. It says the king have said, "Come down." And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty. If I be a man of Yahweh, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. So uh, basically what uh, with uh, what Elijah said is, yo, if I'm a man of the Lord, let fire come down upon y'all, man, and destroy y'all. Right. So if, it, 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 if Elijah is a man of the Lord, then fire is surely going to come down. Right. Let's see what happens. It says, <clears throat> if I be a man of, uh, of Yahweh, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came fire down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 that's the point man you see that so the enemies rolled in like a flood on elijah it was 51 to 1 it was that it was that captain that who was the captain of 50 and his regular 50 with him so that's 51 in total so that's 51 grown men trying to capture elijah and the lord wasn't having none of that right the lord what, what, what did he do right he allowed elijah to have that uh, uh divine intervention right and bring down and brought down fire to destroy his enemies man it says again also he sent him sent unto him another captain of 50 with his 50 and he answered and said unto him O man of god thus hath the king said come down quickly and elijah answered and said unto them if i be a man of yahweh let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50 and the fire uh, uh, and the fire of yahweh came down from heaven and consumed him and his 50 so it happened again right so another 51 came at him and, 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 and you know they wasn't given the proper respect so what elijah did was you know what i'm saying he, he he prayed to the heavenly well he had that you know he called upon that uh the heavenly father to provide for him divine intervention right verse 13 it says and he and he sent a cat and so the king right verse 13 and it says he sent again a captain to the 30 to the third 50 with his 50 and a third captain of 50 went up and came <clears throat> and fell on his knees before elijah Right, and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the two captains 
uh, of the former 50s with their 50s. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. <clears throat> so basically, another third uh, uh, captain of 50 came with his 50, right? So another 51 men came, but they gave proper, but that person gave proper respect to a lot. He said, look, man, uh, you know, I'm bowing down, you know, please don't, don't destroy me or, or, or on my 50. I'm just asking, can you please just come with us, man? I, I don't want to die like the rest of them cats. I'm coming respectfully, right? And then let's look what happened. Verse 15, and the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down and went unto, uh, it's like, and went unto the king. So the point is, Yahweh, man, the Most High, he provides divine intervention for his men, yo, right? If somebody not coming correct, the Most High makes sure, you know, that, that uh, you know, we're protected and we're provided for, right? Because he's not going to allow, you know, his elect that he's preserved to stay, uh, to, 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 to make it unto the end, right? To perish by the hands of the enemy, man. He's not going to do it. If he has preserved for you to stay into the end, that's that's exactly what's going to happen, man. If that's your lot, right, and you got to claim it, man. If that's your lot, then that's what's the, then that's going to be your lot, and can't nothing change it. You got to have faith, right? So right now, this video epistle is the exhortation to the elect. If you're listening, right, to so build up your faith now, man. Right, this is the building process while we still got time left to be building upon your faith, and if you don't have faith, if you're lacking in it. Pray for more faith. Fast for more faith. Right? <clears throat> and ask the Heavenly Father. He's going to increase you, man, because you're of the elect. <clears throat> All right? Let me get another one. So, 1 Kings chapter... I think it's in 17. I ain't ready this one down. Oh, All right, yeah, yeah. This is it right here. This is right here. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 2. Right? So, this is also Elijah, right? So, there was a sore famine in the land. There was no rain and things like that, right? But the Lord, through divine intervention... Right, because we understand through Jacob's trouble, it's gonna be hella famine, right? People gonna be thirsty, people ain't gonna have water, people ain't gonna have food or shelter. But the men of the Lord, what they gonna have, right? They're gonna have food and shelter and water. Check this out. First Kings chapter 17, verse 2. And a word of the Lord came unto him, saying, So there came unto Elijah, get thee thence and turn thee eastward. So go eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, right? That is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. So a brook like a little river, you know, pond, wherever, like a little body of water that he could drink from, right? <clears throat> and it says, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee food there. So the most high commanded, right, ravens, right? Like like birds, actual birds to feed Elijah food next to the river, right? So Elijah was going to chill next to the river. That's what, so this, imagine what's going on. It's a famine in the land and the most high puts a vision or, 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 or a thought in his mind, right? Or, or, or sends him a sends Eliza a message. Go here. I want. I need you to go here, my son. Right. The same thing can happen to us if we are of the elect. The most I can put it in our minds and say, Go here, yo. Go here. Right. And I'm gonna have you drink water. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna have everything you need in the basement. Right. Just you know, stack out there and lock up the doors. Right. And make sure you don't turn another lights on. Whatever. You know what I'm saying. However, the most I want to play it. Right. But that's the point. It says, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So the most high made sure he can command even the animals to come and feed us, man. So you gotta have faith that some way, somehow, Yahweh Shai is going to provide for us, man. Some way. You gotta believe it, man. So lucky, I, 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 I get turned up because you have to believe it. You can't be, you know, pussyfooting around with this, man. You gotta have faith in Yahweh Shai. After all that he's done, man. <sighs> so lucky. All right, let me keep reading. It says, so he went, uh, so he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the uh, the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. Verse six. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. So they brought him meat, and they brought him bread, right, from somewhere. And of course, yes, it was lawful because the Most High would not give Elijah, a man of the Lord, some unlawful food to eat, right. So he had meat and he had bread in the morning, right? Where, hold on, where I'm at? I lost my track. Verse 6, and, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. So he drank water of the brook and he had more. He, he, he ate two times a day. He ate in the morning and he ate in the evening. So that's that's to why, man. He was straight. He was straight. You understand? So when you when you fear the heavenly father and when you doing what you're supposed to do for the Lord, man, he's going to protect and provide for you, yo.
All right, let me get this for you. Second Ezra chapter 16, where I'm at. Uh, let me get 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide. So don't be afraid when a day of a trouble, uh, when a day of trouble comes, y'all. Right? If you've been sincerely serving the Heavenly Father with everything that you got, you've been diligent in your office, right, in your lot. The most high he is going to provide and protect for you if you have a uh, 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 faith in him man. you're not doubting in him right don't be afraid neither doubt you see what i'm saying so don't be scared don't 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 have that uh that spirit of fear right like it says i, I believe second timothy chapter one verse seven the most high is not giving us a spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind right so that so that so if you ain't got that then you know anything else that's coming from from the left hand side right coming from satan or the angels on the left <clears throat> it says, be not afraid, neither doubt for Yahweh is your guide. So he's going to guide us just like he guided Elijah. You saw? He said, go eastward to the brook and I'm going to have you drink there. And, I'm, and then I'm going to have ravens bring you food every day. Right? Verse 76, and it says, and the guide of them. So he's going to be a guide of who? Of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Right? Save the Lord. Uh, save the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down. Right? So this is what Yahweh is saying. Let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift themselves up. So the point is, <clears throat> we are in fleshly, bo fleshly bodies. The scriptures say that a righteous man falls seven times. But the point is, he gets back up, right? A wicked man, he'll stay down there and just give up and won't keep fighting, won't keep believing, won't try to, you know, he'll, he'll just be condemned in his mind and he'll just give up, right? But a man of the Heavenly Father will pro uh, uh, pro uh, profuse uh, resilience. You see what I'm saying? He'll, uh, he'll exude uh, resilience. He'll be resilient, right? You know, he'll go through that fire uh, uh, of adversity, man. That fire, uh, that fiery furnace. <clears throat> so you don't want to let your sins weigh you down because if you're constantly committing sins, what they do is they weigh on your conscience. And I heard the elder he brought this out, man. This and this truth, man, is all about a conscience thing, man. So if you're if you're just constantly just doing wrong, your conscience is going to be condemned, man. The scripture says, "Blessed is he who is not con uh, who, who, whose mind is not condemned, whose hope is not failing in the Lord." So you don't so you, so you don't want to have a condemned conscience. And the way you'll have a condemned conscience is by not doing what the heavenly Father requires of you, man. You see, so you don't want to let your sins weigh you down in that way and let not your iniquities lift themselves up. So you don't want to be sinning. Right. Because the scripture says you want to come to righteousness. Right. And offend less. So you want to offend as least as possible, man. Right. We understand that we are in the flesh. That's where we have that advocate. Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, our Lord, our Savior, our King. Right. He's on the right hand of the father petitioning for us. Right. Because he understands going through the flesh what we go through. Right. <clears throat> so it says that's the point Let me see if there's anything else on that But yeah, that's the point, man He's going to be a guide for us, right? So he's going to guide us Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is going to guide us Let me let me also show you this, right? Because uh, <clears throat> during that, that, that time of trouble, right? Just like Elijah, we're going to be taken care of, right? And this is what the scriptures say it says, uh, second, I just have the two verse 27 Be not weary for when a day of trouble and heaviness cometh Others shall weep let me read it again. I want to highlight it for y'all. Be not weary for when a day of uh, for when a day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. So everybody else gonna be sad. They're gonna be sorrowful. Oh, woe is me. I should have believed them Israelites. Oh, damn, they was really prophets, right? Everybody else gonna be sorrowful and weeping, right? But thou shall be merry and have abundance. So we're gonna be happy, man. You think Elijah wasn't happy that he was taken care of and had water and had food in the in the morning and in the evening? Come on, man. He was happy. He was rejoicing that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh was rocking with him. There was something with him, helping him. Right? So the scriptures say it. Let me try to find this precept real quick. <clears throat> uh, I believe it's in Isaiah. No word shall come back to me void. And it is Isaiah 55 and 11. All right, let me grab that for y'all. I just want y'all to see because you see what these scriptures are saying, right? So if you see what these scriptures are saying, look, look what also what the scriptures say, right? It says Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. So it's going to, it's going to be, it's going to happen. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So the word, he sent it out, 
So the word is going to prosper in, 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 a, in a way where he sent it, right? So he's going to allow that word, right, that, that went out. He's going to allow it to be so, right? Because the heavenly father is not a liar, right? He's righteous, 100%. 144%, right? So that's the point. It, it, you know, these scriptures, when we read them, it should give us confidence because we know they are right and they are true. So if the Heavenly Father says, you know, if you're diligent in your office, man, you're doing right by him and <clears throat> you serve him with, in, 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 in truth and in sincerity with a contrite and sincere spirit, man, the Heavenly Father is going to take care of you and your household, man. So with that, you know, I hope that you Akim and Akwati were edified, exhorted and comforted. And with that, I want to say Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shabbat Thumb, Shalom, yo.